everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, today, we are going to be continuing our lovely Leighton fanfiction reading that I did, um, that I started um, a few weeks ago. Um, so we're not going to be talking a whole lot today. We're, we're, I didn't find any new ones. Um, I just thought that the few we started last time were just so beautiful and brilliant that they just deserved to be uh, read more of. So, so that's what we're gonna be doing. Um, so we're not gonna, we're not gonna talk here too long. We're probably, we're gonna go ahead and head over and, alrighty. So, um, I'm, I'm so ready for this. I've, I've got my, my new, um, oh, it's, <laughs> I've got my, my nice, uh, mermaid shell clip in my hair that I got the other day. And, I've got my Sunny D here today. No, no tea today. We're we're, we're drinking Sunny D, and um, and yeah, I I had a I put a face mask on today, so I'm I'm probably looking like extra like illuminated today. But it also probably helps that there's natural lighting like right by my face, so that that you know helps. And like my double chin is like on fleek, so we're just so right. I'm just so ready for this. Um. As you can, as you can tell, <laughs> I'm just so excited. So as, uh, last time, um, so we're, we're starting off with this one that I really liked, that it was, uh, this lovely, beautiful one that's, um, she's called Professor Layton's Assistant, Layton's Ex-Reader. Um, it's the one that, uh, had the beautiful, the beautiful grammar, and, and I'll, don't worry, I'll catch you up to speed in case you forgot, um. So we last left off here where we got to see our lovely, beautiful self. Um, so keep that image in mind. Keep that mental image up here, okay? Like it's it's a latent next reader, but that's us, okay? Don't that that's the you gotta have that mental image. Um So the last thing we did so um we're gonna be helping Leighton with a murder or something like that in our hometown. And in this last chapter, uh we went to meet him and he hugged us and said how mature we looked. Um, so that that was last time. So now we're going to continue reading in chapter four, which is titled "No Words to Describe." Except I'm sure I, I hope that there will be some words to describe. Okay, we still got the picture. Good. We're not going to forget it. Just so we don't we don't don't want to forget it. Um. <clears throat> okay. So, alright, starting off with Leighton's POV. Looking at her almost made me melt. We're starting off good. She wore a long black coat and a white button-up shirt with a, and a black vest. Why? Okay, right off the bat, why do you need to tell us this when we have a picture? You're giving us a picture? I mean, I guess... I guess it's stories, like... Even if you have, like, a, a, a mental image of, like, what the character looks like on the front cover art or something, they'll still say it in the book. I guess that's a thing. But it's just kind of funny that the picture's right here, and then right there, the first, like, the first thing besides melting is, is the description. Okay, I, I'm, I'm, I'm nitpicking right off the bat. She wore a long, ba a, a, bleh, a long black coat and a white button-up shirt and a black vest, a black skirt, and flats. Shh, they're flats. Oh, okay, okay. And tall black socks, almost like a waiter. Her hair grew longer the last time I saw her. Oh, okay, so it, like, grew longer right in front of you. Like, the last time you saw her, it, yeah, I, I get you. All right, allow me to get some papers, and we shall be on our way for some coffee and then the train. Normal POV. After getting a cup of coffee, we got back onto the train to Barrytonville. I still want to read that as Barrytownville. I really wish that's what it was called. <laughs> it was light afternoon, and the train started to move away. And I looked at Layton. He keeping a casual face as always. He was very handsome. The train ride was go the tr the train ride was going to take another two and a half hours and ten minutes, and I fell asleep. I'm glad you know that right down to the to the minute. Waking up, I was on the opposite side of the seats. Seats scones seats on the train have little booths and seats face each other. You know what I'm talking about. If I know what you're talking about, then why do you why you feel like you have to explain it? And I was laying down across the seat. I seemed to be wrapped in a jacket. Smells like roses. I can't. I can't. I can't with this. 
whole idea, I, like, I'm sorry, I'm all into, like, romance and fantasy and stuff, but, like, just, I'm not convinced that Leighton just smells like roses 24-7. I'm just not convinced. Waking up fully, I see Leighton reading, a, reading about, on the seat I was sitting on originally, he was missing his blue, his blue, his black jacket, which was wrapped around me. Oh, you, you are awake. I, oh, you're awake and fell asleep. Are you fell? I'm making this worse than it even is. You fell asleep and started shivering, so I gave you my jacket. Blushing, I gave it back, knowing we were almost home. Thanks, Professor. Layton's POV. The train started its journey, and Justine fell asleep. The train's air conditioners were blasting, so she seemed to start to shiver. I took off, I took off my jacket and wrapped it around her, and laid her down on the seat in front of me, giving her room to sleep. She's so pretty. So the whole point of this right here was just so he could say that we're pretty. Because you just literally, like, I, it doesn't do anything to just switch POVs and then immediately state the same thing again. Like, it only war like, in my, like, it only really works if you're, if he's going to think something different about it. But that was not different. Like, it's just him saying the same thing. I, I'm getting, I'm snappy today. I'm getting a little bit more, <laughs> I'm getting a little bit more, uh... I don't know what word I'm looking for. I'm, I'm giving them more advice this time around, even though the chances of them seeing this are nothing. But the, just so you you know, when you're going to go make a Layton X reader fanfic, just you you could take all my advice because I'm obviously like the expert of all this. Um, we made it back to Barrytonville and went to the police department. Good evening, Professor Layton. A police a police greeted a police greeted him. We made our way to a small confrontation room. I don't think there's anything at a police station called a confrontation room. I'm just gonna, you know, I'm, again, I'm no expert, but that just doesn't sound right. Another detective met with us and filled us in of what happened. 46-year-old Warren Lakeman was stabbed two nights ago. The man responsible hasn't been traced, and no sighting of him but a witness saw he was wearing all black and purple glasses. His, his face was blocked by a bandana, and he bent over and took something from Lakeman. A wallet? Money? His car keys, maybe? That's it? Usually they would give us more details and more witnesses reports or even tips on who the murderer might be. Oi! Listen here, little girl. We're doing the best we can. And you're not even doing anything. You... That's enough. Thank you for the information, sir. We got up and left and stood outside. Layton had a questioning look. What's on your mind? We need more information to get a trace. Let's see if we can go to Mr. Lakeman's house, shall we? I nodded. Wait. Oh, Layton was so smart and came up with the best plans. I mean, that's true, but that's, I mean, you know, that's just kind of like the next logical, uh, the next logical, you know, step, or one of the first logical steps, I guess, to maybe look for clues at the victim's house or something. But, you know, I... Uh, that's, that's fine. Okay, so now, the watch. <clears throat> so I'm going to assume it means they're going to be doing like a night watch type deal and it's not about a watch, but oh, this time we get a hat. So is this Layton's new hat right here? I hope so, because that's so, um, so great. <clears throat> um, I'm going to guess is like all of Layton's dialogue in bold. I, I guess that's what makes sense so far. We made our way to Mr. Lakeman's home and was greeted by by maids clearing out his house. Walking around the ne the near <laughs> the nearly empty house was almost no hope. Lakeman is a very wealthy man, correct? Yes, indeed, which would mean you would have to pay a good paying career to have such wealth. Wow, thanks. We looked around and found his office. His office was filled with picture of pictures of clocks. Gears and other mechanics. Oh, okay, so it is just about watches. A large painting hung behind his desk of Mr. Lakeman holding a pocket watch in a fancy gray and purple suit. Hmm, it seems he had something to do with watches. <laughs> the, these deductions are just brilliant. This is just fantastic. We went up to a maid and asked her what was Lakeman work of business. She responded by saying he was a well-known watchmaker and pocket watchmaker. Wow. 
He sold the best of the best for heavy prices, but used the best materials for each one, like God and silver and odd paints. So they were these. These are basically just like God. You know, I know. I know they meant gold, but like, let's just pretend that these are the godliest of watches. Lakeman kept this one pocket watch. She pointed at the pocket watch in his hand in the painting, passed down from grandfather to father to Lakeman himself. Only Lakeman's ever touched it. She went on with putting away books. Where is it? I curiously asked. The maid shrugged. We got back to the police department and asked if during the examination of the body, if they found a picket watch, in which they didn't. Layton smile, smile died and thanked them, giving a clap in succession. Looks like we found a trail, Layton said, smiling at me and patting my head. Then he frowned slightly. What's wrong, Professor? He giggled. Pardon, <clears throat> pardon me, Justine, but you don't have a hat. He giggled even more. He always wore a hat, and his apprentice Luke wore one, too. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, my detective uniform didn't come with one. He smiled and patted her shoulder. Let's find you one. So I guess, I guess, you know, Leighton's self-aware that hats are not even self-aware. I guess in this universe, like, the hat, like, it's very important, okay? It's not just Leighton's hat, and, like, it's not that just Leighton and Luke wear hats. That it's it's a it's a tradition, okay? If you're around Leighton, you have to you have to wear a hat. That's just how it is. We walked into a large hat store and looked around. Wow, there's a lot of hats. Some small, some tall, and some just silly. Which one would fit you? Leighton looked at a rack of hats and pulled a tall one with a funky ribbon and put it on my head. It was too large and slightly fell covering my eyes. He grabbed another hat and placed it on my head. It was a black beret that flopped oddly on my head. Leighton laughed. He placed another one similar to, similar to Luke's, even in size. It squeezed my head. Ow! I mumbled. Sorry. The next one he pulled an, another one. It was a shorter top hat, and the brim bended, and at a black and at black ribbon with a bow holding a red feather. A perfect fit. Leighton looked at me and smiled warmly, a sweet, warm smile. Another nice redundant sentence. Smiled warmly. A sweet, warm smile. Yeah, we, we get it. We went to the cashier. That'll be 25 pounds. I widened my eyes. 25 pounds equals $32.38. and 38, 38 cents. Wow, thank you for the conversion. That was a lot for a hat. It actually doesn't sound that bad. Like, if I went to a hat shop and bought, like, you know, a, a freaking top hat that's probably, like, made out of, like, you know, not like, you know, made out of better materials. Like, that just sounds, I know this actually sounds pretty good. But then again, the, per the, the, the like, 12-year-old writing this, probably to them, that is a lot of money. <laughs> you know what? You know what? I don't need a hat. Thanks anyway. I began to walk away. We made it outside and Lane turned back. Wait. So, <laughs> just, I'm, I'm just, I'm just kind of like, I don't understand this. So, Leighton was like, let's go get you a hat, but then, like, she has to buy it anyway, and then she's just like, oh, I don't need one, never mind. Like, it, it made it sound like he was gonna buy it for her, I'm just saying. Like, not that he has, but, but you know, okay, just, just weird. You know what, I don't need a hat. Thanks anyway. I began to walk away. We made it outside, and Leighton turned back. Let me ask the cashier if he had heard about anything about the murder. He was only gone for about two minutes, and came back. Anything? He shook his head. We started walking the streets. We're quite, we're, the, we started walking the streets, we're quite, except the clicks from my shoes. So I guess when Leighton walks, it doesn't make a sound. I felt something soft flop onto my head. Oh, I see. Reaching up, I felt, then soft felt of the hat and the paper-like feather. Oh, she can feel the, hat, the feather on the hat, that's cool. Professor, you didn't have to buy me this. It was kind of pricey. He smiled. Justine, it wasn't that expensive. At least he has some sense. Besides, I was being a good gentleman buying a beautiful young lady a hat. I blushed. I never thought he'd call me beautiful. It's late, isn't it? I don't want to sleep at my hat. Well, sorry that I judged prematurely that you and the, that he did buy her the hat. That's nice. It, it's late, isn't it? I don't want to sleep at my house. I don't. I'm sorry. Sorry. I don't want to sleep at my house. I love with another I love with another female who dislikes men in the house. She doesn't know I'm a detective either. She thinks I'm visiting relatives. Why did I say that word? 
We can rent an inn for the night. No anywhere cheap? <laughs> I nodded and started for the inn. No anywhere cheap and sleazy that we can mingle for the night? <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, I, I know that art. Um, again, not, not credited or anything. Cool. No, I mean, I'm not that... Yeah, like gripey about stolen art but it's just funny like if you're gonna use someone's art <clears throat> for like your story at least like have the you know have their name maybe like on like i wish people okay that that's a whole other issue for another video like but anyway some but you know um quincy in a cheap but a fancy inn pardon me but how much for two for a two bedroom for one night a term-looking worker looked up from his book and snorted. Snort. Sorry, miss, we're all out of two-bedded rooms. <laughs> I bit my lip in frustration. The guy slurped his words and barely looked at us. Well, what do you guy? What do you guy have left? He rolled his eyes and pulled a large drawer from behind the desk and looked at what I guessed to be keys. We got a king-size bedroom left, but that's it. For one night? Or, well, geez, that would come to 16 pounds missed. Miss, 16 pounds equals $20.72. We'll take it. So, so, <laughs> there are cheap hotels, and, like, I've never actually, like, went to a hotel where I was paying, like, I, like, but I know there's no hotel that would be nice. That would be cheap but fancy. That would be twenty dollars a night. That's just not. You're living in a fantasy world if you think a hat is thirty dollars and then just like no, no. Leighton and I split the bill since he already paid for my hat and I begged to pay some for it. Oh, I'm glad you pitched in ten dollars. You couldn't like. Entering the room, it was pretty nice, and the large bed had nice had nice white covers and a radio, and of course the casual table. And vase of flowers on too. He placed his suitcase down and sat in a chair. Oh, I don't have my nightwear, I said, face palming for not putting in my small suitcase. No wonder why I coils fit so many button downs and panties. How many pa okay, well never mind. I I guess she doesn't know how I'm like thinking, well why why did you bring a billion like panties? Whatever. Anyway. Hmm, I can lend you one of my light button down I don't usually wear. I've never seen Leighton in a button down, but only in orange sweaters. He handed it to me and I went in the he bathroom to try it on and now I saw why he gave it to me. It was large enough to almost look like a shorter dress just above my knee. And of course, those longer sleeve. Exiting the bathroom, seeing Leighton already in his nightwear of blue striped pajamas. He blushed seeing me in his large button down and he passed me he bat he passed me to brush his teeth. I thought I legitimately read that as like he passed the toothbrush. Like I'm like you shared two like teeth brushes. <laughs> I don't know you're saying like I I was I was about I thought that's what it was gonna be. I laid on the far side of the bed and he laid on the opposite, reading a book. I looked at him and realized he wasn't wearing his hat. The hair on the top of his head was frizzy. He saw me staring. What's wrong? I blushed. N nothing. It's just that. I never seen you without your hat. He smiled and patted my head, closing his book and turning off like he you know, for someone, you know, for Leighton saying how mature we were in the he he sure just pat our head a lot like we're four years old. <clears throat> um I was sleeping and woke woke up to a clap of thunder. I hated thunder and was terribly terribly afraid, and I crawled into a ball and looked outside the window shaking. Okay, well, I can kind of relate to this, but I've never crawled into a ball and, like, stood in a corner, or sat in a corner. Leighton awoke as well and saw me in distress. He then unexpectedly pulled me in closer to him. Bodies touching, and I froze. Please calm down. You need sleep. Ignore the thunder. Again, another flash, and the thunder boomed, causing me to flinch. I... He he shushed me and slowly rubbed my bad in comfort. I seriously thought that was gonna say like he rubbed me down. That's like 
I'm just expecting. I, I I don't know what I'm expecting, but that's just what I was. Re that's my brain just went straight to that. I calmed down. I felt my thigh. Okay, hold on. Wait, we need a drink for this. I've gone a while with of reading without drinking anyway. Ooh, lordy. I felt my thigh rub against something it wasn't supposed to. Now, what would that mean? I can only guess. My ears and cheeks burned. P Professor, I heard a light snore from him. His arms were wrapped around my neck, pulling me close to him. I slowly put my arms around him and felt his shoulder blades and slowly fell asleep. Oh god. It's funny. I'm laying in bed and there is thunder outside. I'm a little bit scared. Now comes the sad part. I don't have Leighton next to me. <laughs> Man, did I did I write that? The boy in the striped pajamas. Yeah, because that's so relevant to this. Anyway. Yeah, we're gonna we're definitely gonna keep going with this. Like it's it's too spicy to not keep going now. Um okay, I was just double checking on something. I think I think what I'm going to do is we're going to read, I think we're going to read, we're definitely just going to keep, we're going to keep going and then whenever we stop, we stop. In the morning, I awake to the same position we were in last night. Leighton was awake and caressing my brown hair. If anyone were to see us, they'd hunk we're a couple. Well, I mean, yeah, like that is something like couples typically do is like, you know, lay in bed together, but um, yeah. Pull up. The wind just like picked up really bad outside, and I was just like, sorry. Okay. Um. <laughs> I didn't move. Oh, wait, if anyone was, they'd hunk were a couple. I didn't move when I woke up, so Professor thought I was still asleep. So I, being the somewhat daring girl I am, I did something dumb. My thigh was still in eye between his legs. I slowly moved it, pretending to be asleep. Og. I heard a small sound slip from Leighton's lips. I pretended to wake up and slightly push myself away from Leighton. Good morning. Good, good, good morning. <laughs> Rubbing my eyes, Leighton was blushing. After getting dressed and ready for the day, Leighton started to talk about what to do next. So we're not going to acknowledge this? This just happens? Does this just happen in this world that, like... People who aren't together officially just, you know, sleep in a bed together and then, like, fondle each other and then, oh, yeah, that's fine. I'm just surprised we're not talking more about it. After getting dressed and ready for the day, Leighton started talking about what to do next. Lakeman has two other siblings, his younger brother and youngest sister. If we G2 them and ask them who was Lakeman's enemy, we might find a trace. I nodded. Good thinking, Professor, he giggled. That would mean taking another train ride for five hours. Oh, my cat's sneezing. I slapped my head around and... Oh, I, I snapped my head around and looked at him. What? I looked at the clock at read 5.30 in the morning. I yawned. Well, when's the train going to leave to wherever they live? Leighton sipped his tea. He just got tea from nowhere, I guess. He can just he can just make it appear at will. That would be in about four hours. I sighed. I hated to wait so long. I just wanted to go now. I'm tired. I complained, laying bed on the bed. I complained, laying bad on the bed, wanting, wanting to sleep again. Only my back was on the bed. And my legs hung off the side. Leighton walked over and put his hands on the bed, trapping me between his arms. I guess you don't want to have a nice breakfast with me. Professor leaned down closer. P Professor. A knock came at the door. At my door. Breakfast will be starting now. Leighton got off and we went to the dining area. And, or, and chatted about our lives and what happened so far. Have you been in a relationship yet, Justine? This just made me think. I don't know why. It's because it's just so random. It made me think of the scene from the room when it's um, 
uh, Mark and, um, oh god, not Denny, um, I always forget the main, the other guy, the, like, his friend, he, oh, Mark and, but he's just like, so, tell me about your sex life, they just sit down at a table and that's the first thing he says, it's great, um, have you been in a relationship yet, Justine? I laughed and put my lips to the cup of tea, but didn't sip. No, I mumbled before taking a sip. And and then it, we just move on. <laughs> That's it. Just, you know. After a while, it was time to get on the train, and we made our way to the train, bought our tickets, and got on. This train was different. It gave us a tiny booth or room with a sliding door. It had two seats that took up the whole sides of the booth and leg room, like on Harry Potter. Yeah. No other trains that are like that. That's 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 the pinnacle of trains is in Harry Potter, I guess. And we looked at each other. I sat up. I'm sorry. I keep doing this where I read ahead. I sat up to adjust how I was sitting, and the train jilted forward, and I tripped and fell on Professor's crotch. <laughs> How do you specifically do that? I, I'm I'm just impressed at that. Just like someone sitting, like a dude sitting, and you trip forward and you just you distinctly fall on the crotch. How like I don't get how you do that. I'm so sorry, Professor. He was but blushing mildly and smiled. So if you tripped and fell on that, I don't think I don't think he'd be blushing and smiling i think he'd be in pain but i guess what do i know i guess that was a beautiful moment and i'm stupid for thinking otherwise two hours into the five hour long train ride i fell asleep oh no uh, well i'm t i'm double i was double checking our time we're at um the fact that this is number lo number nine ranked like, in the- just in the Layton tag. Like, not even, like, it's just the Professor Layton tag. It's number nine. Like, like, I'm not trying to be an a-hole. It's just- it's just- it's just kind of depressing, but, you know, it is what it is. Okay, so, um, we're gonna do- let's do- it's gonna be a bit long. This video's gonna be a bit long again, like the last one, but I think it's worth it. We're gonna do eight and nine. I really want to know what happens in Hated. Maybe she falls on his crotch too hard and eventually it, it be, you know, that's, that's what does it. Um, and then, then we'll have to do this for another video and it'll probably, probably in that one we'll get to this other one, to, this other one, or you can't see because I think my, my face is in front of it, but this one, the, the beautiful thing, oh, the beautiful thing that is that. Well, let me make sure. Okay. Um, okay. Oh, this one's not that, or, no, it's not that, I mean, these are all not that long, the chapters. Okay, okay, let's just get going. The train came to a screeching stop. We made it to our destination. I looked out from the window and saw how much bigger of a town it was, filled with life. We got off the train and headed for Mr. Lakeman's sibling's house. Lane's POV. We arrived at Granville, a very large town filled with busy life, streets, shops, housing, and all sorts of residents. Justine seemed so amused. She lived in a small town most of her life. I remember first getting an investigation with her. She was a part of a small youth program and was only 16. I was a young and thick-headed 18-year-old and saw her as, a, as magnificent. And how do I put this? Different. That's always the key thing, guys. You gotta be, you gotta be different. You, you know. She wore a funny blue dress all the time. And had, you mean like me? And had frizzy hair and a chipped tooth. That just, oh wow, that's so different. Always going right at her goals instead of thinking things through. Seeing her now, straight hair and so formal, almost makes me sad to know I have no way of contacting her. She seems not herself. I made the decision to ask her what's really up. I must be brave. Well, at least that POV was the first one from him that seemed different, so. We were walking and Leighton stopped and sat at a bench. I sat along with him. What's wrong, Professor? He looked at his feet. You seem so grown up. You used to be so childish. I blushed. Ch childish, I said in a low voice. A low, a low voice. Not like that, like, filled with life. Justine, so outgoing. That name didn't, that name drop didn't seem to need to be there. You're just so quiet now. I smiled. I was just trying to be a lady. 
I'm sorry, Professor. It's just that I've been told I'm so outrageous and too much, and I'm not a lady. You're such a gentleman, so nice and kind, and I'm not fitting to be as a, an assistant. I'm sorry. Leighton paused before smiling and pulling me in for a hug. Yes, I understand. I have a gentleman figure, but I like you the way you are. Questioning things in a goofier way and having your own twist in words, so please, be the Justine I once loved. Now, I will say, I do kind of like this theme. Like, I, I've thought before that if they did, um, I don't know if they'll do it at this point. If if for some reason in, in a future Leighton game or in, the sh in, in, like, the show or something, like if they did another season of the anime... If they did, like, give him a waifu again, I think it'd be cool to have, like, a contrasting, like, not like a crazy, like, a crazy broad, but I mean, like, someone to contrast him. I think that would be cool, and I think they would work, that would work well together. It's just a thought. I know, like, um, just getting a little bit off top, like, off here, but, like, I do like that idea, but obviously in this context, can't give it a whole lot of credit, I guess, but, um. The word love hit me like a train. <laughs> of course he can be just saying that the one he preferred, but it's just so strong to say. Okay, Professor, I smiled and hugged him tighter. After the hug, Leighton stopped and stared across the street at a shop. I followed his gauge to the watch stop. Shop. Shop. We crossed the busy street and entered the shop as an old man polished a case of beautiful watches. Besides from b the busy streets of the town... Silent ticks can be heard in the shop. Good evening, folks. How can I help you? Leighton waved. Just having a look. I caught on to what he was doing and looked and I and I and didn't see any Lake Man brand products. Hey, sir, where's your Lake Man brand products? Isn't it a top seller? I looked at the clerk who gave a weak smile. I apologize, miss, but we stopped selling after his death. But the second best before him is now the best seller. Marshall Goodwill. The man said with a yip. His face seemed to admire the beautiful cabinet that displayed the brand. So I guess that's how it works, you know, when someone dies, like if a head of a company just dies, they're just, it, it, they're just, they're pulled out of stores. That's it, you're done. If anything, usually it's the other way. I mean, I don't know so much about brands, but like in media and stuff, like when someone passes, it makes it almost, you know, people are wanting to rewatch stuff and everything. I'm getting off another tangent. Um, thanks anyway, about after that we left and had a cup of tea before making into the house of Lakeman's siblings. The brother and sister were deprived from the de deprived. I mean, I guess that it just sounds interesting. Deprived from the death of their successful older brother. The sister cried and cried and cried until she left the room, leaving us with the brother. And then we began the very interesting interview. Very interesting. How long is this one? Not very long, so we're just gonna go ahead and, um, okay, yeah, might as well. We've passed the 30-minute mark, we might as well just go for it now. Lakeman's brother explained how great his older, actually, hold on, we gotta take a drink. We gotta do another drink before I keep going. Ugh. He was kind, helpful, and a fun person to be around. Never would turn you down, would always give gifts on Christmas and birthdays, even to the maids. He appeared to be a rude, overconfident man, but was in actuality a sweetheart. What about the watch thing he always had? What's that about? I questioned. I guess it's weird to have a pocket watch with you. The brother grew silent. His sister came and sat down. He treasured it and didn't let anyone touch it, not even us. He said that it gave him luck and was the reason he was so successful. The guy even slept with it. The sister sniffed. That would mean everyone would want it. Did any... Did anyone hate him? Why would everyone want it? Like, oh, just because this guy thinks his pocket watch gives him good luck, everybody wants it. It's, it's, we gotta, we gotta steal it and get his good luck. The sister looked up, oh yeah, pretty much every watchmaker. I thought one of them must have took it. I looked at Leighton and he nodded. Well, I mean, unless, unless it's just that valuable, like, I don't know. Do you know the other, other watch competitors, um, that would take this watch from him? The sister shook her head. There's a lot of them. Floyd, Charleston, Bakerman, and that Goodman. 
always had a bone to pick with my poor brother, but none of them would kill him for a, a watch. I mean, would you believe a watch giving off luck and make one successful? I agreed it was kind of dumb. Thank you for your time, miss. Leighton and I stood and thought. Would someone really kill for a watch? We heard a passing conversation. I must say the ball tomorrow night shall be one of the best. Not only are some London models coming, but watchmakers too. Not only that, the food shall be done by none other than the finest chefs in town. Leighton looked up when he heard watchmakers. A ball, they say, but how will the invitation be delivered to us? Leighton walked over to the woman talking to the man about the ball. Excuse me, madam, I am Professor Herschel Leighton. I'm a professional... I'm a professional archaeologist from London. I think you mean I'm an archaeology professor from London. This, this Justine apprentice in training. I came here for holiday. May I ask how a fine gentleman like me would get into a fine ball? That just sounds so much like him. The lady gave Professor a approving look. Oh, good evening, London, you say? You must be so intelligent. Yeah, for, yeah. To get into the ball, you must wear a mask and find a tire. You two will most definitely get in, such an upstanding man and behaved young woman. I guess being from London was such a rare and amazing thing for people in this town. Thank you, ma'am. I, I bowed. Have a lovely day. A mask and a dress, dress, huh? Sigh, this will be fun. Well, we mustn't waste time. We need a dress, two mast, and a fancy suit for this ball. Leighton took my hand, and we started walking down the streets, shopping. Um, let's at least, you know, take a look. Um, Bradley and Emma. Okay. Well, I think what we're going to do is because, you know, so, since we've already put so much time and effort into this, I can't just not finish this. You know what I mean? It's just, it's my civic, it's like my duty, okay? It's like, no one else is going to do it, so it might as well be me. I mean, it's it's in such high demand, obviously. Um, so what we're going to be doing is next time that we do, we do the final part of part three, we're going to go through these. Um... And then we're going to take a couple, a look at these more, because, you know, obviously these are just amazing um, in, in the worst possible way. And then that'll probably close out this series. Um, I want to check what Hey Guys says real quick. Um, when was this, when was this done? I don't know. Um... Okay. I'm just saying, like, because they don't know if they're continuing or not. Anyway. Um, so yeah, we're going to head back on over to the talkie talk screen. Um, so yeah, that, that was, uh, that, um, uh, wasn't expecting the crotch word to appear in that. That made my, uh, that made my day. That, you know, an unexpected, uh, crotch is always pleasant. Um, yeah, so, um, next time we will finish those off. And I'm not sure what, um, uh, latent related thing I might start after this. Um, I'm thinking of doing something a little more, uh, a little more game-wise. I'm not sure if I'll play one of the games yet. Um, because I actually... Uh, myself on my own, I just recently, um, beat, um, I did Miracle Mask again not that long ago, and I just beat Azran Legacy for the second time, so now at this point in my life, I have pretty much, I've played every Layton game at least twice or more, um, at least the prequel trilogy, I've beat all, like, all three of them at least two times now, but, like, one, two, and three, I've done more than twice, I know that, um, um, so we might, we might do something like that. I'm not sure yet. Um, I was thinking of maybe doing London Life because I think it's fun and I, I think that might be a f more fun, not funny, but like a more cute stream to do. I, er, stream, God. <laughs> I wish I could stream. I wish I had the internet to stream, but, uh, no, alas. 
um, a, you know, cute video. Um, I also was thinking of doing Mystery Room, but honestly, due to technical difficulties, I haven't even beat Layton, uh, Layton's, oh my god, Layton's Mystery Room myself. Um, I don't know, maybe that would be fun to, to do. Um, I, I just haven't seen, like, the last case in it, basically, um, when I tried to play it for the first time. Long story, but long story short, I, I tried to play it, and... Um, I was playing it on my Kindle, and it crashed when I was almost done with, like, one of the last cases, and it didn't save anything, and I would have had to have done the whole case, and I just got lost. I lost my motivation, but, um, but anyway, that's enough of me going on and on and on. Um, so, we're gonna go ahead and end this one. I will see you guys back next time. Most likely, I will be having, um, a new part of Zelda Ancient Stone tablets out before anything else Layton related. Um, oh, as usual, before I go, if you have any recommendations um, or anything you'd like to see me do, um, I'm always down for um, recommendations. So thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!